Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm here just outside my door in the woods behind my house here at 2,700 feet in the Appalachian Mountains in sparse southwest Virginia. And I've come across some puffballs. And these are particular ones are also known as a devil's snuff box or the warty puffball or the gem studded puffball. They're really cool puffballs. They're edible, but they can be mistaken for a very toxic, poisonous species. So in this episode, I'll tell you a lot of the biology and edibility of these really cool puffballs, how they spread their spores and how they get their name, puffball, of course, and also show you how to distinguish them from the toxic species. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. These warded puffballs are relatively small in size and rarely get much bigger than two and a half inches in diameter. They're round or spherical. The surface is covered with these warts and they get the name warded or gem studded puffball because of these surface features. The whole sphere is covered with these wart-like or cone-shaped or kind of like cone-shaped spines and granular warts, and that gave it their name, the warted or the gem-studded puffballs. A distinguishing feature of the warted puffball is the fact that you can actually rub these off. So if you rub on the surface of this puffball, these granular warts will just come off underneath your fingers. And as they come off, you can see that they'll leave these little pock markets of so across the surface. So this is a really important field feature in distinguishing this particular species and why hands-on mushroom examination with an expert is always recommended. When immature, these puffballs are really good to eat. And you want to eat them when their flesh inside is pure white and firm like these ones. You can cut one of these open with a knife and you'll see this spongy, fern, undifferentiated, homogeneously white tissue inside. As they mature, a hole will develop on the top and they'll turn brown and the insides will brown and they'll turn into reproductive spores. So they're edible when they're young and you find this very clean, white, smooth, spongy interior. If it starts to yellow or brown or if it's tinged with yellow, it's no longer fit for consumption. At this early stage, they can be confused by inexperienced foragers for the deadly Amanita mushroom. And I mean deadly Amanita species. They can be a very dangerous mistake. So what you want to look for again in the edible early stage is the flesh of the warded puffball is white and undifferentiated. In contrast, if you cut open an immature or young Amanita species, which are called the button or the egg stage, you will find and see a cross-section of a developing mushroom inside. If you see that cross-section of a developing mushroom inside, it's not an edible puffball and it's toxic. Also, the Amanitas don't have the characteristic warty, spiny surface that rubs off easily with your fingers, so don't mistake this. One can also potentially confuse a warded puffball with a somewhat look-alike species known as earth balls. Earth balls are not edible and they're toxic. The interior of earth balls are less spongy and the internal flesh is rarely pure white as it is in the warded puffballs. Also, the covering is more like a warty looking potato. And again, I always throw in this disclaimer. If you're inexperienced, you're new to foraging, go with an experienced, knowledgeable mushroom forager or mushroom expert from your local area. Don't watch a video like mine or use a book as an only source. Nothing replaces the hands-on of a local expert. And you wanna go out with that experienced authority on local mushrooms. So, when properly identified and harvested at the right stage, 
This is a very tasty, nutrient-rich, edible mushroom when the interior flesh is still homogeneously white throughout and it's very delectable to eat. In fact, it's even been referred to as a poor man's sweetbread in reference to its delicate, slightly sweet taste. Now for me, when they mature or age, that's when the real fun begins. As they get older, that white internal flesh will start to yellow and then brown and singling, it's no longer edible. Outer layers will start to slough off, revealing a preformed hole at the very top of the mushroom. The internal cellular tissue of that puffball will turn brown and powdery, just like the giant puffball and others. And the brown powder is actually spores for reproduction of the species. So that little hole on the top is sometimes referred to as the stink hole because they're reputed to smell like carrion or decaying flesh. I haven't actually stuck my nose in the top of that to tell you for sure. And that stink hole is what has given the other common name of the species the devil's snuff box. If you watch my videos, you know I love breaking down scientific names and this one is no exception. The scientific name of the warded puffball is Lycoperdon perlatum. And the genus name, Lycoperdon, is formed from the words lyco, meaning wolf, and perdon, meaning flatulence. So the genus name actually means wolf flatulence. And it's in regard to the foul odor emanating from the stink hole at the top of this mushroom. Yes, friends, you can't make this up. This is really pretty crazy, right? Many of us knows puffballs best as kids when we'd kick them open, releasing a plume of brown smoke. You can also squeeze these warded puffballs for the same effect. So the brown smoke, of course, is actually spores, and you're actually helping the mushroom reproduce and spread its spores as you do so. High-speed close-ups reveal that the impact of large raindrops can release spores spores at over a hundred centimeters per sec over a short distance. So these spores are highly hydrophobic. They repel and they don't mix in the water. So these raindrops will cause these spores to bounce away and spread at quite a distance from the original mushroom. A single puffball can produce millions and millions of spores. When the spores settle and germinate, they can be found in lawns, on golf courses, in fields, in the woods. They may form fairy rings as well. So these are the familiar little edible puffballs, but be sure not to mistake them for the very toxic and non-edible amanitas and earthballs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door on the Devil's Snuffbox Puffball. I love that particular common name. And remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.